everyone, Mark's Finance and Fitness here where we're all about the finance and the fitness. I haven't done a fitness video in a while, so I will get on that. I've had some allergy stuff, blah, blah, blah. We will get there. Today I want to go over my portfolio now that August is kind of coming towards an end. I've earned all my dividends I'm going to earn for August, and I think it's good to do a quick portfolio update. I want to be transparent. I want to talk about the good. I want to talk about the bad, and I don't want to sugarcoat anything. Uh, so to start out, you know, I just want to state that what I'm about to show you is how well a diversified portfolio does. There's been a lot of people out there, a lot of my friends that are going after those schemes. That's what I call them because there's such a small chance of really making a lot of money uh, through options, through day trading, um, all that stuff, you name it. I have a lot of friends that are buying stocks that are like, you know, pennies on the dollar just because they think it's gonna blow up and they're gonna make all this money. But I think that's only wasting your time. And it's very rare to make money that way. That's like going to the casino. How often are you leaving the casino with a lot of money? Not often. In fact, there's probably like a 5% chance you're gonna make any kind of money that way, let alone a lot of money, which is probably brings it down to 1%. So a lot of people are treating the stock market like gambling. And I just think that's a sure way to lose your money and, and, and stop any kind of wealth uh, for your future. Uh, and even if you win money by doing those, you know, quick get rich ways that you think you can do, guess what you're probably going to do? You're probably going to put that money right back into doing stuff like that and then lose it anyways in the end. And so I'm just saying this because I think it's, there's so much Reddit, YouTube, all kinds of posts out there and it's getting too many people to be too risky. And I'm telling you, the turtle way is the way to do it. The slow, the steady, and the smart way. In the end, you're gonna be very happy and very satisfied. So let's take a look at that, that turtle way, right? The way that I'm doing it. So it, we're gonna go over the sectors that I'm in and kind of the value, the market value. So if we look at my chart here, uh, you'll see I'm diversified in all the sectors. Uh, plus I have two um, extra investments, we'll say. Um, you'll see technology has by far done the best, and I think that makes sense, right? Technology is the future. It's done very well. Uh, I have good companies like Microsoft, for example, where I've made my most money in so far. Um, I also have real estate, which I love real estate. I love to invest in real estate, and to do that in the stock market, you buy REITs. If you don't know what REITs are, research them. I've done videos in the past on it. It's a way to own property through the stock market. And these companies pay out good dividends as well. They're kind of regulated to do so. Uh, healthcare is high. That's one that I believe is, you know, always going to be towards the top end. It has a great future. Healthcare is always going to be something that's at the forefront of our market. And I think that's only going to get bigger. Uh, you'll see on the very right, I have, it says dividend equity. That stands for dividend equity ETF. And that is SCHD. That's my Schwab dividend equity ETF and it's diversified. It has a lot of healthy companies in there that pay dividends. That's what it's focused on and those companies that increase those dividends. And so this one I think will, will actually uh, be one that I invest in heavily in the future. Uh, I've already invested very well in it, but I want it to be one of my top holdings uh, because it's going to get me a lot of that dividend income in a safe way because it's an ETF and this ETF has performed well and maybe I'll do something, a video in the future on it uh, to go more in depth. I also, you know, want to point out just on the very right side, um, I, it says international index. That is my only international exposure. And I think it'll remain towards the low end because I think it's just higher risk when you invest in international companies. I'm a firm believer in the way that, you know, we do things here in America and the market here. And I think it's just going to grow, grow, grow. Uh, recently, if you've heard in the news, there's been some you know, trouble with the Chinese stocks, the, you know, they've been really bringing the hammer down on their own companies there in China, which has really hurt the stocks here in the U.S. And so are the international stocks that are on the exchange here in the U.S. Uh, so this one I'm adding to a little bit now just because of that dip. Uh, but overall, I just, you know, it'll be a, always be towards the lower uh, end of my portfolio just to reduce my risk there. Uh, then on the left side, you see financials. Uh, consumer staples and industrials. 
They're all about the same. I do want to increase my financials significantly. I think there's a bright future for financials and anything finance related. Uh, so that one will increase. Consumer staples is just a st solid, sturdy sector to be in. I don't want to make it too much in my portfolio. I don't think it's a high growth sector, but I think it's a solid sector uh, due to, you know, it always involves companies that are staples, right? So people will always buy these products, whether the market's good, whether the market's bad. And so I think that's just a good one to have. Industrials, I will be increasing my investments in due to this new infrastructure, bi infrastructure bill that passed. I think in the next five to 10 years, this sector will do well. Uh, so this will stay towards the mid range and uh, I'll be buying a little bit more heavily in it probably in the next six months. Um, then we see t telecommunications. This one, I only have one company in and that's AT&T. I've done a video in the past. I'm going to hold it. I want to see what it does, especially with it spinning, spinning off its media side of its business into its own company and I'll get a piece of that. Um, I think it still has a decent future and so I'm holding on to it. I will only add if it dips significantly, uh, but for right now, um, you know, I'm just keeping an eye on it. Eventually, I want to diversify more in this sector, but for right now, that's what I'm going to do is just mainly hold. Uh, consumer discretionary towards the right end. That also only has one company in it, and that's Home Depot. I love this company, and, you know, I think I will add a few more shares in the future. But for right now, I think it is a little overvalued. And so I want to see what happens now that interest rates might be going up, inflation is up. So I think it might hurt this sector a little bit. Um, and I do want to add another company in the sector, so we'll see uh, what I come up with, but I'm very happy with Home Depot. Utilities and materials, I treat these more like bonds, especially utilities. I don't think it's a very high growth sector, but it's a very sturdy sector and you know, it does pay okay dividends. So I'm going to treat it like bonds and because it's not high growth, it's going to be towards the lower end of my allocation as well as materials. There might be a little bit more opportunity in materials, but not much. So I think it's weighted exactly how I want it. Energy is one that I am going to keep the smallest portion of my allocation between everything because there is just so much uncertainty here. And with, you know, renewables getting, gaining popularity, I just um, in, in one fund and it's an ETF. I used to be in individual companies. I got out of those. I just, I'm just think it's very risky um, sector right now. Uh, so I'm keeping my eyes open to see kind of what develops in the future. Um, but for right now, it will stay my lowest. Now let's look at the gains and losses. As you can see, by far, technology has killed it. And that makes sense, right? Technology companies have done extremely well these past couple years, and I don't see them slowing down. And so I'm very um, happy about this and think it'll remain uh, one of the top gained sectors in my portfolio. Then we have healthcare, real estate, obviously, you know, good sectors to be in. And I think these will continue to be um, high earners. We also have financials, which has surprisingly done very well, despite it being one of my lower allocations. Uh, so I do want to boost this up a lot. And I think um, in the future, this one will prove to be a very strong performer in my portfolio. Uh, dividend equity on the very right. That one has done very well, being that it's all in one ETF. Um, everything else is kind of, you know, mid to low range. Uh, you'll see in telecommunications, I'm in the red, that's AT&T, but as I stated, I'm holding that one to see what happens. Overall, it's not hurting my portfolio uh, really that much, so I'm very pleased with my performance here. Then we will look at the sector dividends. As you can see, I'm, you know, like I was saying, technology I'm very, very heavily invested in, but real estate is killing it in the dividends. Why? Because these companies are set up and regulated to pay out most their um, income that they make and so real estate will probably always be at the top end of my um, portfolio as far as dividends uh, next is telecommunications but AT&T will be cutting their dividend in half next year granted everything with this new deal goes through so it'll be brought down more towards an average healthcare and technology 
um, and we'll say the dividend e um, equity ETF is all performing very well for me, bringing me in some good dividends. Uh, and at that dividend equity ETF, I suspect within the next six months to a year, as I share these kind of updates, you'll see that that one will be towards the high end uh, because I really think that's such a, that's my favorite ETF, SCHD. Um, everything else I think uh, will remain similar except for financials. I really wanna boost that one up. So that one you'll see um, increase significantly. Um, so yeah, so basically here, you know, here is a look at, I'm getting dividends from every sector. I think this is extremely healthy and safe way to do things to make sure you're weighted. So we looked at, you know, market share allocation, gain and loss, dividends. We're taking all these into account to make sure we have a good, well-rounded portfolio. And I think I'm doing a great job so far um, doing that. Quick update on dividends. We have, you know, last year I made 330 bucks. This year through August, I've already made 418. I expect to more than double what I made last year. And so just think about the next five years, each year, how much, you know, my dividends will go up and then think at the end of maybe 20, 30 years, more towards 30 years when I retire, how much dividends, you know, I should be making. It's that snowball effect. And so I want you guys to see this because, you know, it's very hard to be patient in the beginning, but as things start, the ball starts rolling, it just really grabs on and goes. And so that's why the slow, the steady and the smart, I think wins the, wins the race in the end because people don't take into account that snowball effect, the growth in dividends, the growth in your portfolio, um, you know, as far as the value of all the different companies and ETFs you're in. Um, so here's a chart just to kind of show again, last year versus this year. Of course, September, I've earned nothing yet because it hasn't started. That's why it went down. Uh, that's why it's down in this chart. But, uh, you know, just to show you that you know, it is working. My investment strategy is working. I'm earning more and more dividends because I'm investing money regularly. I'm reinvesting those dividends and this is gonna create a bright future for myself. And so I just wanted to do this quick update to let you guys see that, you know, my portfolio is doing well. Um, oh yeah, so I'm up $5,000 and up about 22.8 some percent overall my portfolio. And so that's a healthy portfolio. You can't make 22% in a year and a half really anywhere else. And so being diversified, investing in good solid companies is gonna really do wonders for you, especially long-term. And ETFs are a great way to do it as well. I like to hold, you know, my portfolio eventually I wanna be like more like half ETFs, half individual companies. That way those ETFs are kind of my, my safety net, but, because I'll always do my research and invest in good solid companies, I think that portion will also do extremely well. But I felt I always have the ETFs to kind of keep, you know, the boat, shall we say, at a certain level afloat. And then the individual companies can really help boost my profits. And that's just how I look at it. Some people put down ETFs. I think they're smart. I think it's a great way to go because not everyone's going to have that time to always be looking at companies and profits and revenues and earnings and etc. And so, ETFs are a good way to let somebody else handle that, readjust that ETF allocation as needed, bring in companies, put out companies. I think it's fine and I think it's healthy and I do it. And so again, slow and steady and smart wins, wins the race. Please just, I, I don't think it's smart to get caught up in all these options and day trading. And you know, you see a lot of posts of these people making big money. I question that, and if it is true, it's a 1% of the population that probably is doing that. Everyone else is trying to flow in and follow in and do it, and they're losing money, and they're losing time to invest into their future, right? You get caught up in this in options and trading, and you lose a year, you lose two years, you lose five years of doing that till you finally decide like, hey, I'm gonna do it, you know, the steady, strong way where I diversify and invest in companies long-term, all that time is, is gone. So I think you should not gamble at all in the stock market as far as, you know, you know, thinking you can make a big buck quick. Leave that for entertainment, casinos and horse races or stuff like that. But I think when it comes to investing in the stock market, you should just treat it as one thing. That way it, you don't have that temptation at all to kind of go into these other kind of 
you know, get rich quick areas. So um, with that said, guys, I hope, you know, I want to be transparent and I want you guys to follow along in this journey with me. And I really believe in this way of investing. And so I hope you guys have a good day. I will be doing some more financial and fitness videos here in the next couple of weeks. And I'm excited to share those with you. Uh, but have a good weekend, a good week, whatever it may be right now for you. And we'll talk to you next time on Mark's Finance and Fitness.